Chapter 32 of NUR 203 is about the toddler and family. Your objectives you can read for yourself because that's quite a little list there. The terrible twos we hear about all the time and it starts actually earlier than two, like 12 months and goes beyond two into 36 months. It's a time of exploration of their environment as they attempt to find out things, how things work and the power of temper tantrums, negativism, and obstinacy. It's a challenging time for parents and the child and extremely important to their development. Toddlers can be very lovable, but they are in search of autonomy and may test the parent's patience. Proportional changes, the weight gain slows to four to six pounds per the year. Birth weight should be quadrupled by age two and a half. Height increases about three inches per year. Elongation of the legs rather than the trunk and a growth is step-like rather than linear. Depth perception continues to develop and falls from heights are a real danger. So bunk beds, with a two-year-old around is probably not a good idea. Some are climbers and they move very fast. They're less likely to try new foods because of the look, color, or texture of what you're giving them. So they may eat a lot of the same things. When exploring, they may use all their senses and they see something and they pick it up and they smell it and some will even try to taste it. This is the time of potty training. They're physically able to control their bowels and bladder, but the caretakers must be consistent and be on the same page with one another to make that work. As they enter preschool, their immune system is tested. They may, may end up frequently sick with colds and infections because of exposure to things at the daycare setting. They learn to stand and walk during this time. By age two, toddlers can walk up and down stairs. By age two and a half, they can jump on both feet, stand on one foot for a few seconds, and walk on their tiptoes. Now, let's not, re not forget that if they're still walking only on their tiptoes by the time they're three years old and refuse to put their feet down flat to walk, then that means there's something wrong and that needs to be looked into. They can also throw the ball overhand by 18 months. The typical toddler gait is real high stepping one foot in front of the other, kind of like a inebriated person would walk. Erickson's Developmental stage is autonomy versus shame and doubt. They respond well to routines and like having a favorite book, stuffed animal, blanket, or pillow to comfort them when they're tired. They're very negative. Everything is no, no, or mine, mine. Very ritualistic also. Observing a toddler in this stage is fascinating. You can see the wheels turning as they figure things out by experimenting and concentrating on a new task. The sensorimotor and preoperational phase of PAJ's cognitive processes between 12 and 24 months is the tertiary circular reaction. Invention of new means through mental combinations, imitation of behaviors, domestic mimicry, by imitating household activities. The concept of time is still embryonic. Toddlers have no understanding really of time and patience for nothing. They're only concerned with the present, what's happening right now. Domestic mimicry and sexual behavior are common during toddlerhood. They like to help um, as they imitate cleaning the house, doing the house cleaning chores. Whatever they see the parents doing, they want to do. They're very helpful at this age. 
pre-operational phase begins about age two and lasts until age four. It's a transition between self-satisfying behavior and socialized relationships. Everything is why and how, memories associated with specific events, so if they get hurt at the doctor's office, they will not be so happy to go there again. Toddlers can think on the basis of their perception of an event. Problem solving is based on what they see and hear directly rather than what they recall about objects and events. Their spiritual development we'll talk more about on the next slide as we talk about Fowler's faith construct. And here is the slide on Fowler's faith construct. Fowler is your faith theorist that you're probably going to hear about. The only one that I've ever taught about. So you might want to look over this slide, just familiarize yourself with Fowler. Development of body image. Should we have nicknames for body parts or use the correct terms? How might this seem to be a problem for society at large today? With development of body image, it parallels the cognitive development. And ch children refer to body parts by name. So should we teach them that a penis is a penis, that a vagina is a vagina? If you do that in public, then you should be prepared for them to blurt out to you one day, my vagina hurts, and be prepared for people to look at you kind of funny because it takes them off guard. But that is what they te tell us is the proper way to do it, to teach them the proper names. <clears throat> the child recognizes words used to describe appearance, like adults should avoid negative labels about physical appearances. If you make the comment that, wow, that lady sure is fat, then the next time they see a large person, they're going to blurt that right out, probably right in front of the person. So just be careful what you say in front of them because they don't forget anything. And the child usually recognizes di gender differences by age two. So if you have a little boy and a little girl taking a bath together, uh, they may do a little exploring. As in this slide, genital fondling often happens, when, especially when they're in the bathtub in a private place. If these acts occur in public, though, the parents should not condone or bring attention to the behavior, but rather teach the child that this is something that needs to be done in private. Parental reaction makes a difference when guiding the child in their developmental exploration. Gender roles are understood by the toddler, like in playing house. Usually there's a mommy and a daddy. But that's not always the case nowadays because there are a lot of single households and lesbian couples and gay guy couples raising children nowadays. So unless there's a definitive difference in their sex, they may be a little confused. Gender identity is formed by age three. And of course, that's a point of contention nowadays because teenagers often decide to wait until they're 13 or 14 to tell you that they're gay because it seems to be the thing that's the right thing to do nowadays. Social development. Toddlers do not have the same separation anxiety from the mothers as infants do. They have an increased understanding of object permanence and some ability to withstand delayed gratification and tolerate moderate frustration. They begin to see that if mommy leaves, she will be back. And they begin to understand that strangers do not represent a threat to their attachment to their mother, giving them confidence to wander away from the mother to explore when there are other people around. This is when we must teach stranger danger very carefully to our children. <clears throat> Major achievements occur in the toddler years and they like their transitional objects. They find comfort in having a favorite stuffed animal or favorite blanket to hold on to. It's relaxing to them. Like here shows her with a fuzzy bear 
as her source of security. Language, toddlers understand a lot more than they can express, so even when you think they're not listening, they are. They repeat everything they hear, even when you do not want them to. And they love to try new words, just inadvertently in public. Yeah, just get yourself ready for that one. At age one, a child uses one word sentences. At age two, multi word sentences. And usually, as the age goes up to age five, you can count on four word sentences at four and five word sentences at five. Personal social behavior toddlers are very sensitive to other people and their feelings. They'll be the first to come over and pat you on the back and tell you it's all right when you're not feeling well. Temper tantrums must be handled appropriately. They will outgrow this phase one day, one day. Toddlers' skills for independence may result in determined strong-willed and volatile behaviors, but they're trying out these feelings. And we have to guide them into what is appropriate and what is not appropriate and tell them. Skills include feeding, playing, dressing, and undressing themselves. And toddlers develop concern for the feelings of others, like I said. They will comfort you. Play magnifies physical and psychosocial development, and there are different types of play. You can see Table 32.1 on growth and development during toddler years that explains some of these. And I have a PowerPoint on play that I'm posting in your assignments section under NUR 203, so you can look at the different types of play and understand those for testing purposes. Young children enjoy dressing up. What do you think these children are thinking? Looks like the one in the back there with the dark hair is just off in her own little world. She doesn't even look real. She looks like a baby doll. Now, preparation and education can help parents get through this toilet training period. There are videos, books, and all kinds of resources out there. But the most important thing to remember is everyone caring for the child needs to be on the same page and be consistent. Nighttime bladder control takes some time, but they should be under control by age five, and bowel control usually comes before bladder control. See the guidelines box on page 875. Sibling rivalry is normal, but important to remember that a toddler will have the hardest time accepting the new baby into the household. They were the baby, and now someone is replacing them. So there may be a little aggression or regression back to a time of wanting the bottle again or refusing to work on potty training. Allow for time with this child and let them help you as much as possible with the new baby, but always keep safety in mind. They may be a little jealous. <clears throat> They say that the best way for parents to handle temper tantrums is to ignore them. Don't feed into it, or you can imitate them and show them how silly they look. But in public, you need to be aware that others are watching what you do and make sure if you ignore the tantrum that someone doesn't think you're abandoning your child. Negativism is an assertion of self-control, not a sign of obstinance or being stubborn. Do not give the child questions that have an answer of no. You can change the questions and reword the questions or just take charge and say, it is time to go to bed now and not give them a choice. Regression should be ignored and do not put any more new areas of learning on the child at this point. There are many different ways to approach potty training. And the one on the right I had never heard of before this book came out and I saw this picture. Never even occurred to me to sit a little boy on the toilet backwards like that. 
the potty chair is probably the most popular item. Some of them actually talk, they play music, you know, I mean, do whatever works for you, but a stool standing beside daddy, peeing into the toilet and imitating the father worked for me. Thank goodness I had a father around to train them to do this. Here we're seeing um, a sibling helping the mom. To minimize sibling rivalry, parents should include the toddler during caregiving activities. Around 18 months of age, a toddler becomes a very picky, fussy eater, and it will make you nuts to try to find nutritious foods that they will eat without gagging. This can be very frustrating for everyone. How can we help the toddler make it through this time of new tastes and textures of food? Well, what worked for me with my granddaughters was they liked ranch dressing. So everything on their plate had ranch dressing on it. It didn't matter if it was broccoli, they ate it. But that might not work for everybody. Sleep problems for the toddler have to do with stressors of potting training and anxiety of daycare. Oh my, they have so much to worry about. Having a regular bedtime routine will help with this problem. Establishing a bedtime and then an hour before that time, we turn off all outside stimulus no more rough playing, snuggle with them, and read a book together, and just have a little quiet time to let them decompress. Limit fluid intake during this time, but offer a nutritious snack so their tummy is full and not empty when they go to sleep. Some children will wake up in the middle of the night hungry. Children should start seeing a dentist at six months or within six months of the first tooth eruption. Parents need to clean the child's teeth until they're old enough to do this for themselves. And we already talked about fluoride is usually sufficient in the toothpaste we use and the water we drink, but if not, by age six months, a supplement may need to be used. Nursing caries or milk bottle caries needs to be avoided. What can you do to prevent this from happening to your child? Well, you need to do whatever it takes to keep this from happening because all their teeth will rot out if they get milk bottle caries. Not giving them a bottle with milk and putting them to bed is one thing. No sweet tea, no juices, no colas. The young children can participate in teeth brushing, but parents need to brush all of the teeth thoroughly. And this is your milk bottle caries or nursing caries. Note the extensive carious involvement of the maxillary primary incisors. This is an extreme case. This, this baby's teeth are rotted down to the gums. Anticipatory guidance at this age is essential is it's given by the health care provider to assist the parents or guardians in the understanding of the expected growth and development of their child. We have to teach them about the right way to put the car seat in, the right type of car seat, when they can turn the car seat around. Motor vehicle related injuries are a number one cause of death, including drowning and burns at this age. Arthropod bites and stings, mites, ticks, spiders, fleas, scorpions. Apparently I thought ticks were important enough to put in there twice. Especially brown recluse or black widows is what we see in Florida. They must receive medical attention immediately. Animal bites, more likely dogs than cats. Cats will usually scratch first before biting, which can lead to cat scratch fever in 90% of the cases. It's a self-limiting lymphadenitis that usually resolves in six to eight weeks, but sometimes they have to go in the hospital for IV antibiotics to heal that. Therapeutic management would be wound care, and care management is to teach the child to respect the animal's space. When the dog is eating, the child should not be near the food bowl 
Or if the dog is chewing on a bone, keep the children away from the dog. Simple things like that can save you a lot of grief. Human bites, tetanus toxoid should be administered, and a wound larger than six millimeters needs medical attention. Because we all know that human bites are far worse than any other kind of bite. Principles of emergency treatment. See page 892 and 894. Keep the poison control hotline somewhere handy or commit it to memory. If we simply put things up on shelves in cabinets, lock up poisonous things from the curious toddler, we can do a lot more good than harm. I know a lot of people don't believe in child proofing, but to me that's just silly. What do you think she's thinking? You know she's looking right at you and reaching for that bottle that you're telling her no about. And she's looking at you like, mm-hmm. Let me see how fast it takes you to get over here and get this from me. Cabinet locks won't work if you show the child and they're watching how to unlock the cabinet. Box 32.5 gives you a list of sources of lead and read the cultural considerations box also on that same page. <clears throat> Look up chelation therapy if you want to understand more about how they remove heavy metals from the blood. And this was covered in another slide presentation as well. Read the community focus box on page 899 for reducing blood levels, <clears throat> blood lead levels, excuse me. Suffocation death rates among infants younger than one year old has dramatically increased in the last decades. This tells me that someone is not watching their children. Children and babies can choke on anything that goes in their mouth, so we must be careful that when they are crawling around that there's nothing for them to pick up. No bumper pads in the beds, toys or blankets either. Make sure when you put them in a playpen or play yard that it's not going to collapse on them. Basically, I'm telling you, just be a very cautious, watchful parent. Some children are born climbers and they can get hurt falling off the couch if the corner of the table is sharp. Fall down the stairs if you don't put up that gate. Secure that wall unit to the wall so it doesn't fall over on them when they climb on it. <clears throat> be the adult and think about what they can get hurt doing, just look around. Toddlers are clumsy, and when they're walking or running with a spoon, a fork, a toy with a sharp edge, they can fall down, and then they can get hurt. <clears throat> These wall plug outlets are good until the baby figures out that they can work them out, so make sure they're put in correctly. Sometimes they work better if you put the little pull out part upside down in the hole instead of upright. And your question for this chapter is a characteristic of toddler's language development at age 18 months is A. Vocabulary of 25 words. B. Increasing level of comprehension. C. Use of hollow phrases or D, approximately one-third of speech is understandable. Now let's think about this. With A, if you have an 18-month-old who's speaking in 25-word sentences, you got a genius. Approximately one-third of their speech is understandable, only to them. We only can comprehend maybe half of what they're saying. <laughs> The answer, of course, is increasing level of comprehension because remember I told you that they're listening and they understand more than what they can express. This concludes this chapter. Thank you.